Hello, everyone. Mostly to the people in the internet and also to the people in this room, thank you for being here on Saturday and greetings from Berlin. I'm Vesna from RIPE NCC and I'm speaking at uh, Bits and Trees <laughs> conference. Uh, I won't try to say that in German uh, here in uh, Berlin today. And uh, the goal of my talk is to connect the RIPE community with the communities that are gathered here, which is, in my understanding, academics, activists, hackers, uh, so that we can together work on the internet that is environmentally sustainable. This is a very busy slide about me, and uh, the most important thing is that I uh, am um, kind of sitting in between the, the RIPE technical community, which I will explain in great detail, and the hackers community. And uh, I love three-letter acronyms. That's why I have chosen to structure this talk uh, by mixing uh, two um, layers of abstractions theories, which is TCPIP and NVC. NVC stands for nonviolent communication. And uh, I'm, um, when I was learning this uh, many, many years ago, I have uh, uh, I've been surprised how it actually kind of uh, is analogous to the TCP IP stack in a sense that when you are communicating using nonviolent communication, you're supposed to uh, say your observation, feelings, needs, and then make um, a request, and then at this, and then. Uh, on your counterpart side, you're supposed to empathically listen to other people's observations, feelings, needs, and requests. So it's kind of going up and down on the stack in order to establish connection. And uh, the um, one minute summary of my whole talk is going to be structured in this, um, in this exact format, uh, as in, I will give you first some observations or facts, what is the RIPE community and how does it fit within the internet governance structures, and what are the facts and what is the situation of climate crisis, and again, how does that impact internet infrastructure. Then I will go more into uh, my feelings uh, and uh, what I have kind of noticed about uh, other communities, how they deal with, with this topic, and then go deeper into needs, which are universal, and there I will also express, like, what do I need from you, or what do I think RIPE community needs, and what can you uh, have, which needs can you have fulfilled from participating in the RIPE community, and then at the end, some concrete requests and offers. So this is like a crime uh, scene picture of uh, internet governance uh, created uh, by somebody else. I, now, of course, have stolen it from the internet, but uh, there is a, a, a link here where you can find the original. So this uh, has been created at the time of the transition of one of these organizations with the acronym names IANA um, from the US government towards the multi-stakeholderism that uh, have been already explained in other talks in this conference. And this actually describes protocols and names and numbers. But I'm only going to talk about the numbers when it comes to the internet governance because of the RIPE NCC being part of the uh, regional internet registry structure. So uh, we, like the whole uh, regional internet registry structure, distribute IP addresses and so-called autonomous system numbers to internet service providers and everybody else who needs them in a hierarchical way. So we do it um, based on geography, so in Europe or this whole area uh, colored in, in mustard yellow, uh, the RIPE NCC operates, and then in Latin America we have LACNIC, in Africa AFRINIC, APNIC for Asia and Pacific region, and ARIN for North America. And we all operate in a similar way in a sense that these are all not-for-profit membership associations. 
So uh, we are only distributing these resources, and we are stewards of this uh, resource uh, and treat it as commons. So uh, there is, um, yeah, um, no selling and buying. There is no market economy. At least this was how it was envisioned many years ago. Um, so more about RIPE NCC and RIPE. Uh, so RIPE stands for Réseau IP European, pardon my French, uh, and it was created in uh, 89 when uh, people thought that mixing French and English acronyms was a cool thing. And it was at the time when uh, the IP networks, internet protocol networks, were being connected in Europe. And uh, the handful of operators of those early networks got together and said, hey, we have to talk to each other. How are we going to interconnect? How are we going to keep track of registering who has which network, what are our contact details, and so on? And from that, the RIBE community has now grown uh, over many years to a, a very active, very international community, but because it's informal, we don't have like numbers, like how many people belong to the RIPE community. On the other hand, RIPE NCC is a network coordination center for the RIPE community. And that is an, uh, as I said, not-for-profit membership association uh, located in Holland. Uh, this is our office. Uh, and because uh, of COVID, it's empty. No, it's just a picture. It looks better when there are no people in there. Uh, so we have an office in Amsterdam, and we have a very small uh, other office in Dubai. And so we are secretariat for the RIPE community. There is about 150 people working for the RIPE NCC, and we come from about 25 different countries from all around the world. Our official language is English, even if we are uh, in, uh, registered in Holland. And we, um, as I said, we distribute those resources, but we do many, many other things because we are this coordination center for the network operators who need a neutral and impartial body to distribute the resources fairly and openly, and openly and transparently. So we publish a lot of documentation about how decisions in RIPE were made. Uh, why did we assign addresses this way or the other? And the policies that we follow have been uh, actually agreed within the right community. So, um, in addition to the RIPE NCC, you can see here the history of uh, internet governance bodies and how does that overlap with the history of the global warming. So while we were uh, discussing how does the internet function and how should we do this growth and make it fair and uh, talking about all these technical topics, at the same time, there are larger forces in the world that we also now have to deal with. So this is partially why I want to introduce these topics back to the RIPE community, but I need your help. I need more people to come and talk about these topics in RIPE. So, it all looked very nice 50 years ago when we thought internet is going to uh, bring equality and democracy and uh, education to the, to the world, but now we can see that uh, the internet is also bringing the problems of the society together with the development of the internet with, with us. So um, some people call this effect uh, data is the new oil. So we can't live without data, but it is actually at the same time ruining our lives in one way or the other. So there is um, a lot of energy consumption, there is a lot of pollution, and uh, exploitation of workers, exploitation of nature, like digging out and extracting all these uh, precious metals, and of course, exploitation of, of youth in the uh, impoverished countries that have suffered from colonization, and now they are suffering from the digital colonialism. So that's what we are doing to the environment, but how is the environment impacting the internet infrastructure? Well, um, we can't escape the effects 
of the sea level rise and the storms, and there's a lot of reports on how they are impacting, for example, operations of data centers, the forest fires too. And uh, the, the data centers and the whole internet, of course, is using a lot of electricity and a lot of water. And because of the um, heat waves, there is a shortage of water, and that is, again, impacting the operations of data centers. And so it is very important for the business um, case of these internet providers to pay attention, but I would say that it is even more important that we um, work on finding solutions in which the internet is not going to use so much water and electricity because it's making it unavailable for the human population and for the animals and the plants. So those were the, the observations, and they do make me <laughs> uh, have mixed feelings because uh, I used to be very optimistic. I used to see the internet uh, through the pink glasses and think, oh, it's going to improve the world. And then about uh, 12 years ago, I kind of flipped to the other side and started being very pessimistic and thinking, oh my God, this is like all dystopian an apocalyptic future that uh, is awaiting us because every technological solution that I was seeing around us was making the situation worse. But I couldn't escape, so here I am still. And to put things in an even broader context, we are facing a lot of other crises, and it makes me really stressed and, and sad to have to worry about my own future and the future of my children that are exposed to the pandemics, because there is a plural, I don't know even how to say a plural of pandem pandemics. There is uh, many wars going on. Uh, I have uh, listed here mostly the ones in our part of the world, but of course in the global south there is uh, other wars uh, happening, and then the climate chaos is impacting us all. So that's all very doom and gloom, and at the same time there is reasons for celebrating. For example, this event is amazing and it gives me a lot of hope and positive energy to see that there is people interested in this. And we are here, we are together, we are healthy, more or less, and so we can uh, do something about it. So all these feelings are kind of mixed, and here is the illustration, uh, some visuals about it. And then, again, this is a slide with kind of mixed feelings. So we have been dealing with these topics in RIPE, and still I'm thirsty for much more. So, uh, one of the authors featured on here, Chris Adams, is in the room. Thank you, sir, for coming to RIPE and, and talking about it. So, if you want to be uh, also thanked in public next time, uh, please join us. And uh, some other people have been talking about, like, e-waste, greening of the internet, uh, how to make the business decisions in a... Um, sustainable way, and this is one possible aspect. And of course, personally, I would really prefer to have much more activist approach, but let's see what, what works. So on the other hand, I'm very frustrated with the fact that my community, the RIPE community, is taking very slow, small steps in um, acknowledging the, the, the climate impact and the topics that I already listed, and I was wondering why. So I found this uh, chart which describes like, uh, why are the people, how are they explaining to themselves why do they have to delay the climate action? And for us, the most important one is the one highlighted there in yellow, which is technical optimism. And that's understandable because the people who come to RIPE, they're all engineers, uh, well, not all, uh, the core is the engineers who have been building this network for many, many years. And so our primary goal used to be growth. We were supposed to connect the next network, more users, that country, rural uh, areas, to bring more and more users to the internet. And so now it's really hard to kind of uh, change track and think like, hold on, maybe this cannot go on, this endless growth. 
Then uh, it is uh, another very interesting, like kind of half solution. Yeah, but we'll make it more efficient. But that is a paradox because uh, that has been described in, in many other areas. Like the moment you add more capacity to fix the problem, it's not that uh, all of a sudden the speed or anything that you're trying to solve becomes better. People just start using more. So that's this paradox of efficiency. And we have to be aware and see beyond that. And then, of course, um, the internet has moved uh, from those early days of um, a kind of utopian thinking and doing things in a communal way and consensus building and not for profit to the more uh, yeah, mainstream neoliberal capitalism business models. And so it's very hard in that way to start thinking about um, taking steps for far in the future if they're not bringing the short-term profits. So fighting all of those is, is really hard. And then we have other unacknowledged beliefs, like the tech is neutral, so don't talk about politics because we only bring technical solutions and whatever people do with them, it's their problem. Or we are the good guys. We have been building this internet, which is a good thing, and Whatever we do, because we are good guys, is going to be a good thing. So uh, these kind of ethical conundra are um, hard to, to deal with. And to help us all out, here is a better picture of uh, nicely illustrated um, how these kind of thinking is um, justifying the, the delay in taking the climate action. You can take a... There will be slides later. <laughs> so uh, I have also listed a lot of other resources, how technical communities are dealing with these topics. And uh, here are the four that are mostly colorful. So uh, the first one, uh, CCC. Congress in 2019 had a, a, a beautiful slogan, resource exhaustion. And there were many talks about the, the climate and environmental topics which I have covered in this blog post on, uh, on our li RIPE Labs. Then the Association for Progressive Communication also has been doing a lot of work in imagining how can the technology of the future be more environmentally sustainable. And, but still, this is not done with these kind of engineers in mind. So there has to be a lot of translation between these kind of uh, communities, activist communities, and the, the engineers and the network operators. So the, the hackers uh, camping that happened this summer in Holland is coming a little bit closer to that. Uh, here is the one of the presentations featured uh, by uh, Igor, who is a professor of complexity studies at the University of Delft, so academic and a hacker, and so he has been uh, presenting a lot of like scientific facts, which is what is really needed, and then um, other a pair of academics and hackers, Tobias and Doris, have uh, come up with the 13 propositions about the internet in the burning world, and they have been presenting it at, uh, at technical conferences, for example, APNIC. And so I'm hoping that uh, this is going to bring like a critical mass so that we start talking about these topics more. And here again, it is documented uh, for you on the slides. So some more hopeful solutions. Um, there's a lot going on from the decolonizing and degrowth to the community networks, permacomputing, and um, intersection of a lot of these, uh, yeah, how can I say, oppressions that exist on many levels and then are reflected in the infrastructure of the internet. So, how to bring all of this together. What are my needs? Well, I need your help, and I also want to help you. Um, 
but it is really hard to talk about this to techies. So I have made um, another analogy between the OSI layers and the Maslow pyramid of needs, and uh, also like extended OSI layers to include the financial and political, because again, technology is not neutral. Technical decisions are political. And so the work in RIPE is divided into working groups. So I have uh, tried to map here how do these working groups correspond to some skill sets or uh, which needs can you fulfill and where would you then go if you want to come to RIPE. And when I say come, I don't mean uh, physically because we have mailing lists since forever. And uh, in the more modern times, we also have forums and slacks and telegram and uh, like all kinds of other ways in, you, in which you can join uh, some of these working groups. And so for the political discussions, we have a so-called cooperation working group where the governments or the legislators um, or the uh, like uh, national regulators come and talk to the network operators. So this is like not purely technical um, place to, to discuss these things. And then when it comes to application layer, which is web, um, we are also not overly concerned with that and specifically don't want to talk much about content. But for example, uh, the uh, important let's say overlap could be the open source working group where we can talk about the free software solutions for making thing for making internet infrastructure more sustainable or uh, anti abuse working group where we can talk about the actual use of the of the infrastructure that we are building measurements analysis and tools then when it comes to the transport layer we can talk about the internet of things the hardware, e-waste, uh, the uh, materials needed for the production of the uh, equipment and so on, and then the routing working group. So again, this is more mostly about protocols, but we can also talk about the equipment vendors, how to make the production or maybe recycling of, of the equipment more fair and so on. Then the connectivity. So here we, you can talk to the people who are running um, internet exchange points or um, CDNs, uh, content delivery networks, because they also come to, to RIPE to talk about the policies and interconnection between their businesses. And finally, uh, at the um, at the most fundamental layer, you can talk to uh, RIPE NCC members because those are the businesses that actually make the, the internet function. So we have about 23,000 members, which traditionally used to be internet service providers and telcos and mobile operators, but also universities, banks, anybody who wants to have like independent resources and they are all members and they get to vote on the decisions. So if you influence the membership of the RIPE NCC, you can influence the future of the internet in, in Europe and uh, the surrounding areas. Pfft. Sales pitch. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is more uh, dear to my heart are uh, the topics or the needs of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And it's also interesting to map that to the UDP protocols. Uh, but I don't have much time to uh, spend on this now, so you can take a look at the uh, included links later. And so I come finally to these requests. So I don't want to come uh, here as, as a helper in this um, power over um, relationship and I don't kind of ask for your help in that way either, but I want us to work together because our shared liberation depends on each other. For me, as a, as a person with privileges, it is really hard to kind of get used to this. So this is also more reminder to myself, but also to project to everybody, like this is the attitude in which I'm approaching this cooperation. 
So if you do want to take part in our events, we, um, yeah, as I said, we have a lot of online things with mailing lists, but also twice a year we have a meeting. It used to be in person and then because of COVID it was virtual and now it's hybrid, where about 1,000 people get together in those working groups to agree on let's say, solutions for the future of DNS or the routing or the internet protocol version 6. So this is where you can also fit. We also uh, support academics with funding, so the students can get a free ticket and, uh, and the travel costs uh, paid. And we also have a fellowship program, which is not only for students, but for anybody from uh, underserved regions or marginalized groups. So once you become a bit more familiar, you can take part in these power structures. You can volunteer as a working group chair, or you can be on the program committee and then determine the program of the, of the conference. If you uh, are interested in more like localized content, we also organize a lot of trainings and, and smaller events. And finally, uh, we have a, a blog where you can also publish your work to reach out to the RIPE community. I believe that the tables are beautiful data visual visualization tools. <laughs> so this is my attempt to illustrate how uh, there are many uh, skill sets uh, or, or many kind of um, areas in which you can be an expert or your eager to learn, and there are many activities in, you, in which you can engage in taking part in RIPE or any of these other adjacent technical communities. So it's not only for techies and engineers. Uh, we need documentation. We need uh, journalists. We need people who talk about uh, uh, business or law. We need a lot of caring and healing. We need facilitators. So whatever your skill set is and whatever you, you are interested in, you can find some activity um, in this table. So um, on the other hand, we also offer uh, funding for the uh, projects, which are mostly dealing with free software or open data. Because we are not for profit and we get all this membership money from all these companies that I mentioned and we can't keep it, we give it back to the community. So every year we open a community projects fund and uh, five to ten projects per year receive money and so we could help you back in that way. Uh, if you come to our events, we also offer the um, mentioned funding, but also the uh, childcare, mentoring, and uh, if you're a speaker, you can also get a, a free uh, ticket. And uh, I'm still proud of this kind of grassroots, bottom-up community self-governance that exists, even if the internet itself has moved or the internet infrastructure business has become like very economically driven in this community, you can still influence things by just participating and by being active. So the next uh, big event is the end of this month in Belgrade. That's my birthplace, so I'm uh, especially proud that we will be hosting this kind of international event, and there is still time to apply. Um, people down there <laughs> do everything last minute, so you will fit right in if you only now <laughs> apply and register for this meeting. And uh, uh, there's also other interesting events that deal with green tech. These are just a few. Already at this conference, I have heard of, of many more. So I'll be updating uh, uh, our calendars with, uh, with many others. So uh, the interesting one is this uh, Internet Architecture Board workshop uh, about the e-impact. So the Internet Architecture... Okay. 
Internet Architecture Board is the governing body of IETF, which is Internet Engineering Task Force, and they come up with all these uh, protocols. And so this is a great place to actually talk to the engineers who develop protocols, so not really running the networks, but making the underlying protocols for running the networks. And so that's like uh, impacting the, the future. And then maybe hopefully there will be a, a CCC Congress in person. So I hope to see you there. And to, to finish, um, I want to say that the uh, network operators and the engineers that have built the internet and are part of the RIPE community are having a great power in their hands by shaping this tool. And because of that, we also have a great responsibility to make the technology that we are creating be beneficial and not harmful to the society and to the people and to the planet, including squirrels. So we cannot be hiding anymore about uh, saying that our decisions are only technical and that what we are doing is building a technology and it's not our department of what is that technology being used for. No, all the technical decisions are also political and we have to take the politics and the environmental sustainability in account when we are developing these uh, internet standards and building internet networks. And so uh, to finish with this uh, kind of funny version of the Maslow Pyramid, which says that underlying all the needs is actually Wi-Fi or the battery. Well, um, underneath all that is actually the living planet, and there can be no internet on the burning planet, and we should all rebel and make the, uh, the planet thrive together with us. Thank you. Questions? Comments? Do I have more slides? Yes. So this is uh, the summary again. And uh, tomorrow I'll be in the other building across the street. And we can talk about uh, RIPE and empathy while drinking tea. I uh, brought a lot of tea and uh, tea cups and everything from Amsterdam, so we can sit together and, uh, and have discussions. Now, thank you for your attention. Do speak up, now is your chance. We still have, how much do we have? Let me see. Yes. <laughs> you noticed, thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are done, then thank you very much and uh, see you around. <laughs>